Okay, we're going. Uh, so Paul, you're the Chief Technology Officer for the Americas for Hitachi Data Systems. Uh, thanks for doing this today. It's going to be valuable for people at Waterloo. Can you start by telling us uh, how your career led you to the role that you're in now? Certainly. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, I've been here about three and a half years. Prior to that, I was the CTO and, and technical executive of a client for 17 years. Vast majority of that in the financial services world, but I've been a consumer of technology versus a seller of technology, but always externally facing. So always looking at how we can use external opinion and perspective in different industries, sort of apply that internally to how we can sort of make change, make innovation. Prior to that, I was in product management. So I've seen the product build side of the equation versus just the technology enablement side um, and financial services, even from sort of an underwriting perspective. So appreciating how a bank works uh, up to the point where, where I can spend time, most of my time with clients talking about innovations. So a good background for understanding how your technology will be used uh, by the people like you, uh, exactly. or like you used to be. Exactly. Still, I see myself as a consumer. So most of my conversations is, what would I have done with it had I seen this presented to me? Sounds valuable. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about social innovation today. Uh, how would you describe that? What do you mean when you talk about social innovation? So social innovation is moving the needle in the world, right? It's yeah, it's greening the earth, it's solving child poverty, it's making the world better for its citizens. That's a lot of change, right? And it's, you know, it's moving a large ship when it comes to that. But it, you can make change at the macro and the micro level, and it tends to be involving it, people, machines, data. It's about um, ensuring that the central figure is the human versus the central figure being money or the central figure being the, uh, the government. Uh, and it's about saying, if we were to exist in the world on our own, how would we survive a million years instead of surviving a thousand years? Probably a good thing. Uh, <laughs> why do you think it's so important today? It's today because you see things like climate impacts, you see sort of war and strife, you see poverty, you see um, varying degrees of you know, economic instability and even social instability. How can we ensure that we're all one practicing human race and we can all you know, evolve over time? Why do you think it's important that the technology industry itself is participating in social innovation and contributing to improvement in these areas? Well, technology is fundamental to most changes, especially in the recent, especially in the last few decades. Right, while it's relatively easy for me to build a new machine, and that new machine can you know, bulldoze and, and create room for a new building, it's technology that can evolve much faster and create much more experience for the individual consumer. And you're finding that consumers' consumption of technology is actually having a much bigger impact on business or enterprise consumption of technology than the enterprises alone. So the, the vast use of mobile technologies and cloud technologies is because consumers have used it, not because the businesses have felt that that was an appropriate approach. Makes sense. So uh, what do you see as the main information technologies that organizations will be adopting and exploiting over the next few years? So analytics is going to be huge. So right now IT is uh, like an internal IT shop is organized application centric. So everything has to do with creating new features and functions of an application. An infrastructure exists to house and create a well-performing environment for applications. What you're gonna see is a shift from applications to data centricity, right? Because it's the data that actually produces the value. Data is the puzzle pieces that determine what the full puzzle looks like, right? Uh, it's the value that as you add more puzzle pieces to puzzle pieces, I can create, in fact, more puzzles. So what happens if data becomes centric then all the technologies that surround data become important. Things like Internet of Things, right? Things that are connecting machines to machines or machines to people, the human interface becomes important. Things like um, virtual reality or augmented reality becomes a human machine interface into rediscovering the world. Uh, things like analytics to do predictive understanding, predictive diagnostics or predictive understanding how uh, retail needs to change over time, or to predict how you need to consume. Those are all sort of technological impacts. 
Wonderful. And how can those technologies be applied to improve people's lives? You know, what sort of transformations are we likely to see? I think you'll find transformations in things like retail, where instead of you having to do all your research before you get to the store, the research is in front of you while you're at the store. You use your camera, you look at product, shows you product information, shows you reviews. You don't have to have pre-qualified that. Or when you go to a doctor, not only could they diagnose you on the spot, they could treat you on the spot. And potentially, if there's an expert in the other side of the world, could treat you remotely to support that. Right? You can get into various different worlds and various different realities without having to leave your home. Right? It's the, the, the surrogate approach of, of experiencing life. Interesting. And so you've talked about the importance of machine data. Uh, can you explain what that is and how that might be used? Sure. So lots of things exist and those things you can just refer to them as machines, right? So it could be as small as an RFID or as large as, as let's say, a bullet train. Well, in order for these machines to uh, sort of live in a sort of consumer-centric world, they need to be able to talk to each other and they need to be able to talk to people. That language, in many ways, is data. So take a train as an example. A train produces, give or take, uh, you know, 40,000, sorry, 40 terabytes per day per car. It has 30,000 sensors that have to talk in real time to 300 sensors per meter of track that have to talk in real time to seismic detectors of the ocean or wave detectors in order to look at things like tsunamis. Well, in real time, all that has to talk to each other so that they can predict when there might be a tsunami and move trains out of the way to keep public safe. Or we can, by extension, look at things like cameras, where cameras used to just record content. Now cameras become edge devices where they record content, they look at license plates, they uh, recognize faces, they can control emergency services. Cameras can talk to cameras instead of having cameras be visual to people and people make the decisions. That's the difference. Okay, uh, so smarter cities are an area where it's thought that we'll see substantial social innovation. Uh, what do you think those will look like? What do you see as the main things that will be different in cities in the future? So smarter cities is moving from government service centric world to citizen centric world, right? Instead of having 10 different departments with 10 different services and you having to interface differently with them, it's saying, now I have a whole lap that is central to me. It's day in the life to me. I'm going to drive downtown and I have to find a parking spot. I have to go pay for my uh, license plate and I'm going to do that online. I'm going to uh, find out where the bus transportation system and when the next bus is coming. So it's centric to me. Smarter cities is to say, how do I make sure the day in the life of the citizen is much smoother than it was in the past? We expect that digital transformation will impact businesses significantly. Uh, what do you think that will mean? So digital transformation for us is a relatively large um, business strategy change, right? So there's two big disruptors that are happening in the world. Disruptor number one is organizations that are cloud-born, internet-based, sort of taking the organic growth of large organizations. Take uh, renting a room as an example. You know, large, you know, Marriott, Sheridan-like organizations of trillion dollars worth of property. In order to create a new room, they build another property or they buy another company. Uh, whereas Airbnb really just signs up more uh, individual people that want to rent out their rooms. The, the base is different, however, they're taking the organic growth of an organization like Marriott. Then there's technological changes. Things like AR and VR and IoT and new payment systems like Apple Pay, which are disintermediating banks. Uh, things like uh, mobile deployments where um, if, you, if you're not on the App Store, then you don't exist. Or things like the consumer assumption of replaceability. So if I don't like this app, I'm going to delete it and download another app. Those trends, those disruptors are uh, forcing large organizations to have a digital transformation program, which is really just three parts. It's how do I change my time to market dramatically, where it's not, uh, not, not one week to deliver service, but it's one hour to deliver service. And that might mean outsourcing everything that I don't do perfectly. Then what most people think of digital transformation is customer experience. How do I match the experience of consuming my service with the consumer, the, with the behavior of the consumer themselves? Retail is a great example where you're used to going to the store, buying product and leaving. Then omni-channel was created. So you can go online and go to the store and get the same experience. But the, but the behavior really is 
go online, find three products, go to store, look at product, buy product, go home. So the new experience should be go online so I know who you are, go to store, pull those products down because I know who you are when you walk in, and then make a decision. Do I buy it and take it home with me? Do I buy it online, have it delivered to my house before I get at home? Or it's $5 cheaper, five stores down, so why don't you go there? And then the final impact is new business model. That, in fairness, is much more complex. In the government world, you can't really change the business model. But in the non-governmental sense, you can look at moving from a model of uh, consumer buys product and pays cash to consumers buy, buys product and services over time to consumer buys a service that includes the product and pays on, a, let's say, a monthly basis to consumer buys product but only pays as they consume it, a consumption model, to completely the Uber model, where consumer only buys product uh, when they absolutely need that product. And you have a bunch of consumers and a bunch of sellers in the same platform, and it becomes a marketplace. Now, in Ferris, business model dr dramatically changes enterprise, and that takes time and energy, and we see more of a diversification of model versus a replacement of a model. That's digital transformation. Fascinating. So. The changes that you're describing there uh, will mean changes, as you mentioned, uh, about how organizations will behave too. Um, what will that mean for the IT function within organizations? How do you see them changing to uh, be part of this world? So that falls back to my original point on application centricity to data centricity. What you need to do is, is move data from being a side effect of an application what happens when I click the submit button, the thing I save, to the central point and purpose of IT, the thing that actually derives value for me. How to do that is you create a data strategy for digital transformation. And they tend to be four big capabilities. Capability number one, how do I manage data as an object, as something that's just as important as an application? How do I elevate it so that it's treated like a function? Then there's data governance, how I steward that data, how I secure that data, how do I create a user ID and password to that data, not unlike I have a application. How do I treat data differently over time? How do I protect it exclusively? And how do I uh, apply governance and regulation and legislation to the data, not to the infrastructure? That's sort of managing the data. Then there's creating new value to the data. The first one is mobility. How do I abstract data away from its source? How do I now make it available to people, places, and things? Uh, and how do I use it for completely new business purposes? I might have created a client for a mortgage app, but now I can use this client to look at all products and portfolios. And then finally, how do I use mathematical and stati statistical algorithm to actually derive new value from the data that I have? How can I create new product? How do I wrap existing product in data-based valuable services to actually grow the company versus just being an information source. So you're describing there the role that data will play in digital transformation with organizations. You've mentioned something called the nexus of forces with big data. Can you just talk a bit about that, what you mean by it and what its implications are? Sure, nexus of forces is a gutter term. Uh, it is equivalent to the third platform in IDC. It really just means this. Any new applications I build, any new value that I create within IT is much more likely to be mobile first, much more likely to be deployed in the cloud, much more likely to be centric um, on an information basis. Uh, and while all those things are true, uh, it's, uh, the complexity isn't creating the mobile app. The complexity is actually the nexus or the integration between the two. It takes me two weeks to create a mobile app. It might take me months to figure out how to deal with the new data I'm now receiving from that mobile app. It's the integration, it's the nexus that's the complex part. In fact, it's the nexus that might derive most of the value. It's not just the feature in the mobile app. It's that it's connected to Facebook, and that I'm getting new IM requests. It's about me remodeling my contact center from 1,000 people to receive, that receives phone calls to 100 people that receives IMs and Facebook and SMS and email and getting calls. So we need to think about the business implications, how businesses will exploit the capabilities that are being created by new apps and the new data. Absolutely. Okay, uh, so uh, can you talk also uh, about how social 
innovation might be impacted by big data. So as they're starting to look at applying this sort of technology, uh, what is this going to mean? What are there innovations that we're going to see? So I like to think that digital transformation is the new business strategy for the digital disruptors. If you add IoT to that, it becomes social innovation, right? So IoT becomes a new machine to machine integration. It's extending the business to the physical world. And that extension of the physical world is creating much more significant data than the internal digital transformation would in the orders of hundreds and thousands of percentages. Well, that dramatically changes how I manage data and how I analyze data. And it's actually creating that big data world. I'm going from, ter from terabytes to petabytes. And when I now have petabytes of information, my ability to move data changes. My ability to analyze data changes. My ability to even search for and look for interesting puzzle pieces changes, right? So IT needs to be evolved, evolved with that sort of new, new data world. Interesting. So my final question uh, is, uh, as students look forward to their working lives, uh, do you have any advice for them based on how you think technology will impact organizations in the future? What should they think about as far as their future career is concerned in this new uh, world? Uh, IT will become data centric, so I think your career should be data centric. So think of data as not being a database, but data as being a piece of interesting information, a puzzle piece that will create an eventual you know, series of puzzles to which you can then sell. Focus on the data and focus on the value derived from the data. In other words, focus on financial models. Focus on how you can wrap uh, data as a service around physical products. Think about the different business models one you can use to deploy. So combining your sense and understanding technologically of, of infrastructure and data and with economic and financial and business models. It's the, it's the merging of both of those that will actually produce the most value in the future. Wonderful. Thank you for taking the time to do this interview, Paul. It's, uh, it's going to be valuable to our students for all sorts of reasons, especially around thinking how the things they're learning today are going to be used by organizations in the technological future that they're going to be working in. Thanks for your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you.